We should just point out real quickly here, Tom, uh, pretty much every big volume mover right now in the U.S. pre-market is a Chinese stock or some stock linked to you know, the Chinese markets over stay there. Stay with us through this, yeah. and we can see that, you know, the U.S. ownership of this ADR, this is the domiciled rights, they're out of Cayman Islands, this is typical Chinese business, they come over here where we can trade them in America, Invesco 7%, Alibaba 7%, Morgan Stanley 5%, Wells Fargo 3%, and on and on. We got the right guest at this moment, Christopher Grisanti of MAI Capital is a great student of the equity markets looking for value within growthiness. Now, Chris, do you own any of these Chinese companies? We don't, Tom. We, we think there's a lot of opportunity here that's that's just much simpler. And if I, if I were a Weibo shareholder, I would be afraid. It, I hate to use this analogy, but I think Hong Kong was frankly taken private several months ago. And it's, a, it's an issue of control. I think it's not data. It's about controlling the most important uh, political and corporate well, entities in the country. I think you and I are on the same page on this. Your job is to talk about it. My job is to ask the questions. I will. Right. We spoke to Richard Haas of the Council on Foreign Relations in the last hour about an American disarray. Is this a Beijing, Chris Grisanti, and capitalistic or financial disarray? No. In fact, Tom, I think it's a, a Beijing that's exercising its uh, strength and it's uh, perhaps taking advantage of an America in disarray, but it's also exercising its strength in its own playground. So um, I would I would suspect we'll see more of that over the in the second half. Let's we'll talk. See. Yeah, Chris, I am curious here about what the effect this could potentially have on American companies. There's been a, a lot of reports about uh, some of the issues Tesla is having with regards to its relationship with Chinese authorities. Obviously, uh, Apple and the iPhone basically wouldn't exist without its relationship with China here. Is there a point where uh, U.S. investors, uh, European investors, need to start being worried about the ties that those that those uh, countries and those companies in those countries have with China? Yes, I'm only half joking when I say, yes, there's a point, and it was last year. I really think what this exhibits is a flexing of muscle much more overtly than we've seen in the past. But but clearly, I don't even think the Chinese have been trying to hide the ball. They want control over just about every financial transaction mm -hmm. and, and corporate move in the country. So I, I think it's a it's a tough place to do business as, as the major tech companies have been finding out. It is a tough place to do business. It's also a relatively lucrative place to do business uh, right. based on the size of the population and of course the growing wealth there. For a company like mm -hmm. Apple or any sort of big tech company that wants to have a presence there, how comfortable are you, Chris, as an investor in some of those US names uh, and being exposed to that Chinese market? Well, not terribly comfortable. I, I'd say what we do try to do is pick those that can survive. A Facebook is a perfect example. Without it, even though, as you mentioned, it's such a terrific market that, that you know the rest of the world still dwarfs China by itself. So a Facebook, a Google have been doing pretty well without towing the line and, and, and basically having been mostly excluded from the marketplace. So, so we like that. Yeah, a number of those companies actually um, threatening to pull out of business in Hong Kong if they have to toe the line there. Is that a concern for you when you look at the um, international companies that you're invested in, how they do their business in China, how they manage that balancing act? Of course, it has to be a concern. And, and I'm a great admirer of Richard Haas's. And, and I think the black swan that we may be seeing over the next few years is a real kind of hot confrontation with China. And that very much worries me. So again, I would uh, it's, an, it's on the negative side of a balance, those companies that have China as a large piece of the pie for revenues and profits. But more and more, that's got to be all of the big companies you're invested in. If I think of the big banks, if I think of the big cyclicals, the car makers, you know, the equipment makers, um, if I think of the big tech companies, they all have to do business in China. It's their biggest, fastest growing market. Well, you know, I wouldn't go quite that far, actually. I think Facebook is, frankly, excluded from China. Google is mostly excluded from China. And they're doing, you know, pretty darn well. So I'm not saying they can, obviously, they'd be able to grow a lot faster, but they're doing okay as it is now. 
But having said that, we can't keep on going like this with you know a, a yeah. divided world of people who can and people who can't. So so there's right. a resolution coming. I'm just not sure it's a happy resolution. Chris, we're not having the normal Christopher Grisanti interview, which is a good and beautiful thing. Thrilled to have you on with this breaking news out of China. But to bring it back to something you've been expert on and profited on, and that is Apple Computer. I believe, A, Apple has manufacturing facilities in China. I believe, B, Apple has a lot of revenue coming from China. Is Apple shares or your confidence in Apple shares affected by what China does with Chinese stocks? Now, how can they not be, Tom? But, but I would say even greater, we're not super positive on Apple as opposed to other alternatives in technology space, simply because at the end of the day, most of its profits still come from iPhones. So look, I, I love Apple, I love Tim Cook. It's just an expensive stock at over 30 times earnings when I can get a faster growing non-hardware stock like Facebook selling in the low 20s times earnings yeah. based on next week's earnings. And, and so I, I just think there's other better ways to play tech growth than Apple at this current time. 